Oh, hi there. I'm reading about animals. They have a language of their own. But not really. Not like us, because we've learned to speak. Speech. That's what it's called. And I'm going to start talking about that today, which is ironic, because it's about speech. Language acquisition. How do we learn speech? Well, I'll tell you. Regardless of the nationality of the child, each child will go through the same stages of development. The child's first word is usually when they're about one, but they do loads of other things before that. Crying. In the first few weeks of a child's life, different cries can become identified, such as hunger, distress, Cooing. Noises such as coo, gaga. Cooing usually happens between six to eight weeks old. The babier is using his vocal cords for the first time. Babbling. Babbling is the most important linguistic section of the child's first year in this world. At six to nine months, the child will start to form phonemic expressions which are similar to that of adult language. It's great. Now we're talking. So the child said their first word now. But there's problems, as you would expect. Overextension? Underextension? What are they? Come with me. Overextension might be when any male walking into the room might be referred to as daddy. Hi, Daddy. I oh, know, I'm not your daddy. I'm your friend. In recent years, more attention has been paid to underextension, which is when a child limits the number of reference for a word, usually to the original context in which it was learnt. This is a guitar. What's this, Dan? Uh, it's a guitar. Well, and what's that? Don't know. It's a good example of underextension. I call it baby talk. Theorists call it CDS. On the whole, it's child directed speech. CDS aims to attract and hold the baby's attention, make the conversation more predictable by referring to the here and now, and help the process of breaking that language into understandable chunks. Features of CDS are your pitch and exaggerate intonation and stress. Frequent use of child's names, Ben, and absence of pronouns. Repeated sentence frames such as that's a, that's a, questions and commands. Oh, it's um partial repetition and repetition of adult saying words. A large number of one word utterances. More hungry toy ham. Absence of past tenses, e.g. ran. Use of simple sentences! Omission of inflections such as plurals, planets, and possessives. Mummy's planet. Few verbs! Less pre and post modification and less function words such as my and art! Use of concrete nouns and dynamic verbs. Bread! Walk! House! <laughs> Use of expansions where the adult fills up the child's utterance. Use of recastings. When we listen, we hear sound. When we speak, we use sound to portray what we mean. Children do this in what we call phonological development. How does that happen? Generally speaking, um, command of all the vowels is achieved before the consonants. Um, they're easier to pronounce for the child. Um, and it might take up to the age of six or seven before they are, they're confident in using all the vowel and consonant sounds. Um, it's easier for children to pronounce um, uh, hard consonant sounds such as P and B. Um, it's easier for them to say them at the start of words like bush and push rather than uh, at the end of words like rip and uh, rap. <laughs> um, and uh, I mean, it's fairly so obvious. So tell me that. how um, children simplify their phonology. 
Um, just tell me. Well, Christian, um, firstly, uh, we can start with deletion, uh, where a final consonants may be dropped, um, such as the T sound in hat and cat, to produce sort of a ha or ka sound. Um, unstressed syllables are often deleted, a typical one, nana instead of banana, for example. Um, consonant clusters are reduced as well. Um, snake becomes nake. Sleep becomes seep. And these are all uh, examples of deletion, and they can, they can occur. Richard, give me my M glass. Thank you. Tell me about substitution. Well, Christian, um, substitution is simply instead of deleting a sound to make the word easier, it's just replacing a sound. So the um, the R is in rock or story becomes a W, um, for example, or TH is uh, in thumb or there can become a D, an N or an F. T is in toe becomes D, P is in pig becomes B. Um, these Tell me about reduplication. Reduplication is when different sounds in a word um, are pronounced in the same way, such as dog, um, becoming gog. There's only one topic left, because you can't get graphology in your speech. It's grammar! <laughs> when your child gets to one years old, it may start speaking in one-word phrases. Hence the one-word stage is what we call this stage. However, holophrases might be used because your child is obviously thinking more complex meanings in their head and may say juice, but what do they mean? Do they mean, I want my juice, or juice, what is it? You just can't know. Christian phones a friend to find out more about the two word stage. Oh, hi, you alright? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. I was just wondering if you knew anything about the two word stage. I think it's from when they are about 18 months. Oh, alright, okay. So you're saying that it they start saying sort of two words at a time and they usually pick out the key words in a sentence if they're repeating somebody else's utterance and take that, so like... But what, what was that example again, sorry? Okay, so if the adult said Ben's playing in the garden, they might say play garden, emitting words that are not carrying as the sort of necessary information like in and at. Okay, thanks very much. I'll ring, I'll ring you back tonight later. Okay. Bye bye. By the age of two years old, children are usually producing utterances of three to four words, but there are some essential elements missing, like articles, conjunctions, auxiliary verbs, prepositions. They're not there. But about five years old, you do get all of these sort of things starting to be acquired, and. Um, well, you're just a bit of inflectional affixes, really. That's where it starts getting hot. I mean, I'm talking about your plurals, I'm talking about your possessives. Like, when children start picking up that, it gets wicked. We hope you've enjoyed the presentation. There is still loads to learn, but we hope that it's been informative. And the information also has been informative. Because you see, that is the nature of information, it being informative, and information is very important for exams. So, we hope you do well. I hope that we do well as well, you know. But the main thing is that you should enjoy the presentation and that you get quite a lot of information from it and that it's been, some, it's been a worthwhile experience. And that also, the thing about it is that you, to get a copy, take it home.